entry-level gaming laptops with NVIDIA's RTX 2050 and RTX 3050 graphics cost about the same price, at around 600 US dollars. But 3050 is a higher number, so obviously that means it performs better, right? Well, not always. I've compared both GPUs in 25 games to show you all the differences. Both GPUs have the same number of CUDA, Tensor, and RT cores, as they're both using the GA107 Ampere die. They both have 4 gigs of VRAM capacity, but the 3050's memory bus is double the size of the 2050. The 3050 also has more memory bandwidth, but the 2050's memory is clocked higher. The 3050 has a larger possible power range, which is why it can reach higher boost clock speeds. More GPU power equals more FPS in games, but also more heat which needs more cooling. So we normally see higher GPU power limits in more expensive laptops. Both laptops I'm comparing here run their GPUs at 40 watts, so this is meant to be a fair comparison between cheaper, more budget-friendly entry-level options. I'm using the ASUS TUF F15 for the 2050 and the MSI GF63 for the 3050, both bought with my own money, so I guess you could say I sponsored this video. They both have the same 6-core CPU, and the same dual-channel kit of memory was used in both. We can see here just how different GPU power levels affect both the 2050 and 3050 in the TimeSpy graphics score. It's honestly quite close. The 3050 was scoring just 10% higher than the 2050, with both laptops running their GPUs at 40 watts. Now, it is possible to find a higher powered 3050 laptop. They can go right up to 95 watts with Nvidia's Dynamic Boost, which is much higher than what we have here at 40 watts. So obviously, with a higher powered 3050 would expect to see a bigger difference compared to what I'm showing here. Actually, just to keep us confused, at the start of the year, Nvidia actually refreshed the 3050 with 6 gigs of VRAM and 25% more CUDA cores. But again, that's usually found in more expensive laptops, and not these entry-level options, which is what we're comparing here. It's possible that the RTX 3050 is more efficient, because it was drawing less power when running Cyberpunk 2017 at 1080p high settings. Now, to be fair, both laptops have other differing power-consuming components, like the screens, so this isn't perfectly fair, but my 2050 laptop was using 8% more power. Despite the 2050 laptop using more power, the 3050 laptop was offering better performance in this game, though it's only 2 FPS better at high settings. This puts the 3050 7% faster than the 2050, which definitely sounds nicer than just 2 FPS. We can boost FPS by like 60% on both laptops by enabling DLSS. Both laptops run the game much better with DLSS on balanced mode, and this is a feature they're both able to use as they're both RTX GPUs. Hogwarts Legacy wasn't that much different either, with the 3050 reaching a 6% higher average FPS aka less than 3 FPS. This is another game with DLSS support, so it's possible to boost both laptops to 60 FPS with high settings, which definitely makes the game run nicer. Though that said, with just 4 gigs of VRAM, the game can't load a whole lot of textures. I want to talk about The Witcher 3, because the results are a little strange. The 3050 was 8% faster with ultra settings, or a little over 4 FPS this time. But if we turn DLSS on, the results actually get worse. The 3050 has a bigger 24% lead now, but realistically, if DLSS is running worse, you're just not going to use it here. This was seen in Spider-Man 2. Both laptops were happily running at around 60 FPS even with the highest setting preset, but then performance drops back with DLSS on. This this could be specific to the laptops I'm testing though, as my 2050 laptop performs better in CPU workloads, presumably due to better cooling and power delivery, despite both having the same i5-11400H processor. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a CPU heavier title too, but without DLSS, they're both reaching about the same average FPS, with a lead to the 3050 in 1% lows. But now with DLSS enabled, both laptops at least get an FPS. FPS boost unlike the last two games, but the 2050 with its superior CPU performance is able to take the lead in average FPS. 
a Plague Tale Requiem behaved more normally. The 3050 was reaching a 9% higher average FPS, which again sounds alright, but in reality we can see it's only a 2.2 FPS lead. Enabling DLSS was able to improve FPS by 40% on the 2050 and 38% on the 3050. Some games like Dying Light 2 had fairly big differences. I mean, the average FPS lead with the 3050 was only like 3 to 4 FPS, but the 3050 laptop had less dips in performance, as shown by the higher 1% low. And that's in spite of some of our previous CPU heavier games indicating that the 2050 might have an advantage there. Meanwhile other games like Forza Horizon 5 had basically no difference at all. While Doom Eternal hit a higher average FPS on the 2050, but the 3050 had a much higher 1% low, meaning a more stable experience. Generally speaking though, the RTX 3050 was ahead of the RTX 2050 in most, but not all of the 25 games tested. We'll just skip through the rest of the 16 games tested on screen now rather than waste your time having me talk through every single one. So feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of the results. I think it's important to test a wide selection of games so that we can get an accurate picture of the average performance differences to make the fairest possible conclusion. In other words, more data equals more better. Let's look at those average differences next. On average, over all 25 games tested, at 1080p the RTX 3050 laptop GPU was only 4% faster compared to the RTX 2050 laptop GPU. This graph shows how much faster each game was on the 3050, so we can see results really vary depending on the specific game. Some were actually better on the 2050, but in most cases it's an extremely small difference that's within the margin of error range. Regardless, best case, we're talking about only a 12% boost with the 3050. And it's worth remembering that in terms of actual FPS difference, the 3050 was only 3 to 4 FPS faster in both of these games. Not much difference at all, in other words. Here's how the frame rates look if we instead take the average of all 25 games. I think this better allows us to visually see the overall differences as a quick summary. And yeah, on average there's no real noteworthy difference. The RTX 3050 is only a little better than the RTX 2050. It kind of makes you wonder why they bothered launching the 2050 after the 3050 was already out. In any case, the 3050 does perform a little better, but what about the cost difference? Pricing and availability will change over time, so check the links below the video for updates and current sales. And if any 2050 or 3050 gaming laptops do go on sale, we'll be sure to add them to our gaminglaptop.deals website. So check that out regularly to save money on your next gaming laptop. We update it every day with all of the latest sales. Right now, the exact RTX 2050 laptop that I've tested goes for 700 US dollars, while the exact RTX 3050 laptop I've tested is just 50 dollars extra. But if you wanted apples to apples, ASUS's Tough F15 with the 3050 is $100 more than the 2050. These are about as cheap as both laptop GPUs are currently available for but they do go on sale. HP's Victus with the 3050 was recently on sale for the same price as the 2050 for example. So again, check out our gaminglaptop.deals site to find a good deal. I don't know if there's any point making a cost per frame graph, because it's clearly going to depend on what price you're able to get them both for. If they cost about the same, then you might as well get the 3050 as it's slightly better. But I don't think that it's worth paying 50 or 100 more for the 3050. The extra improvements just aren't there relative to the price increase. But what about the newer and higher tier RTX 4050? The 4050 does cost a bit more money compared to the 3050, but unlike what we've seen here, the performance difference is also bigger too. Plus the 4050 has frame generation support, which makes supported games feel smoother to play. Check out this video next where I've compared the RTX 3050 against the newer RTX 4050 to find out if it's worth stretching your budget a little further for the 4050.